<clears throat> this tutorial is just going to be a very basic eye color application um, using three colors, a highlight, a midtone, and an accent color. It's how I've been doing my makeup forever and a day. And frequently you'll see in magazines and catalogs this application technique um, utilized. This is a starting place if you're using three colors. I'll also have other videos using trendier and newer ideas, and then I'll have another one that's a much simpler idea. So if this is too much, maybe don't even watch it. And if you already know this, maybe don't even watch it, okay? So I'm just, uh, and full disclosure, I'm not a makeup artist. I am a Mary Kay consultant, but I've been wearing makeup since I was 12. <laughs> and I've been to tons and tons of seminars and I've read things and I've practiced and all that good stuff. So I have experience, but I haven't been um, trained. So this is how I do it. This is what I know about it. And that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> okay, so we're going to put on our highlight color with our all over eyeshadow brush, which is the big fluffy brush as they say. So I'm using all Mary Kay uh, brushes today and I'm going to use honey spice I'm going to try to remember to use different colors each time so that you can kind of get some exposure to the different um, colors that we have and I got to flip my mirror so I can see magnify because I you know how I am can't see without my glasses and I've already prepped my eyes I have eye primer on and also, in addition to primer, I like to wear a cream eye color. And since I knew I was using um, some beigey browns, I decided to use, um, what's it called? Beach Blonde, right? Beach Blonde. I always want to say Beach Bronze because we used to have a lip gloss called that, but it's Beach Blonde. <laughs> okay, so I have that cream eye color on first. Um, that's just giving an additional layer of um, coverage for any unevenness that I have on my eyes and also so that um, my light color shows up really well. It prevents creasing and fading. It's sort of like a second primer. Not, you know, you could really choose either an eye primer or a cream color. I use both. Why not? I get it at wholesale. Okay, so I've got my Honey Spice. I am putting it first up under my brow. Um, I've noticed that more recent techniques don't go all the way up to your brow, Shh. but this is um, how I always learned it. I think it looks great to highlight the brow, so I'm sticking with it for this tutorial anyway. And then I also do the highlight on my lid, so the almond shaped part of your lid. And we're going to take that all the way back to where you can feel it, you know, t touch your orbital bone, so to speak. So regardless of where you think your crease is or isn't, if you think you have big eyes, small eyes, whatever, we're, we're throwing that all out the door. We're just feeling where the orbital bone is and we're gonna take our eye color and go from the lashes all the way to where we're feeling that bone. So, and it's sort of a, you know, a, a crescent or a, you know, semicircle shape. Honey Spice, this is a shimmer. It's a soft color, but it's a little richer, a little more substance than um, like the spun silk, but not quite as bright and flashy as crystalline. It's a really great alternative if you have a little more pigment in your skin. Okay, same thing on the other side. Using my light fluffy all over brush underneath my brow. And the almond shaped part of my eye, all the way to where I'm feeling that brow bone, or brow bone, where I feel the orbital bone. And at this point, this is very similar to my eye color, so you might not even be able to see, you know, what I've done so far. I can see it with the magnified mirror. 
And you notice that when I'm putting on the highlight shade, I'm really patting it on. We've talked about that before. Mineral eye colors um, can have a tendency to absorb right into the skin. Um, it's just, just the way they are. And the really, really light colors, I find that if I don't pat them on, that I can't see them. So I don't, I don't just brush them on. I, I really pat them on, sort of like how we did with the finishing powder in a previous video. Okay, so I'm done with that brush. Now I'm moving on. And this is really, really clever. Um, the eye crease brush. It is specially designed to pretty much take the work out of it for you. Um, the way that the brush is tapered, the way that the bristles fan out follows the crease of your eye. It's, it's just really fascinating. I listened to the makeup artist that developed it and the way that it kind of goes into the, the divots, so to speak, and follows that crease. It deposits the color exactly where it needs to be without you really thinking about it, basically. So it's, you know, it's great. Um, Luis Casco, C-A-S-C-O, is the one who designed it, and I love him. So I'm going to use hazelnut. I mentioned that before. Hazelnut is my favorite mid-tone. It's just real easy. I will say that um, our mid-tones and accents pack a punch. So um, I tap off the excess. I think in my first, first video, I loaded up with the driftwood and I put it on without tapping it off, and it was really, really dark. Um, I'm not sure why I did that, but uh, they just, they really have a lot of color payoff, which is a good thing, but if you don't want a really dramatic look, you need to, to tap off the excess. So I just tapped that off because I don't want to go too crazy for those of you that don't like to have a super dramatic look like I do. Okay. And this is sort of fanned. I'm starting at the outside. I'm coming in. I'm going to follow that orbital bone that I was just talking about. Regardless of where you think your crease is, higher, lower, or if it's exactly on the orbital bone, you want to find that hollowed out place and follow it with this brush. So I'll do it so that you can kind of see what I'm talking about. So I'm finding that area. And I'm just following it with my brush. And as I get into this area right here, it's like the, just because of the shape of the brush, it, it's, it's like it just kind of disappears like right into that little crevice. <laughs> I, I wish I knew the fancier words to explain this better. But like the way that it, that it moves and deposits the color, puts it exactly where you need it to be without you even really knowing what you're doing. So now I'm going back and I'm picking up what I had tapped off previously so I can put on a little heavier. And I'm purposely doing this pretty lightly because I want to be able to um, show people that you know don't wear their makeup as dramatically as I do. I know not everybody wants the drama <laughs> that I typically go for. So can you can you see that? I might put a little bit more on just for just for camera. So like there's like you can feel that there's like a that's where my bone is and I'm just following that area, okay? If you need to go back and put more color, you want the extra color to be toward the outside and then you want it to gradually diminish as you get closer. If you have a lot of color deposited in here, you'll look cross-eyed. Okay, so that's a very soft, natural look, I think. <laughs> but that is my problem. I tend to always think it looks good, and then I get out in the real light, and I'm like, holy moly, guacamole. Okay, my vision is going is the problem. Okay, and we'll do the same thing over here. I'm finding that orbital bone, just following it in. And then it just kind of goes right into that little crease right there. I kind of just go in one direction because my eyes are getting crepey. We talk about this almost every time. Younger people can do more of a windshield wiper motion. I have to be careful with that motion because 
well, I guess I just did it fairly successfully, but it can kind of skip a little bit because <laughs> I've got, I've got a lot of texture right there. And so when I'm going back and forth, you know, it um, it doesn't apply as smoothly as it did once upon a time. So that's up to you how you want to do it. Either way, this brush works. So you can either kind of go, you know, in short feathery strokes or you can go back and forth. But you definitely want to start from the outside and come in and you want to follow that orbital bone. You can actually feel the bone. You can feel the bone. If the first time along you want to like just kind of tap the bone so that you know that you're going in the right place, do that to make an outline. And then just go back along. And we've talked, um, I talk a lot about how my eyes are hooded. So if I add or change anything, I might, you know, go a little higher than, than the average bear. Just to kind of push back that fleshy part of my eye. I don't want to make this too complicated. But, um... You know, you can kind of decide like how thick this part is, this how thick the application of the midtone is. So I tend to kind of bring that up a little higher than some people might. And it's so funny when my eye, when I'm applying it, you know, I'm opening up my eyes really big, and so it looks like wow, you know, I'm covering this huge area with that darker color, but watch what happens when I relax my eyes. It's like it all just kind of goes down so that really I'm not, I'm not, my normal eye, you can hardly even see it. That's why I have to go up high because when I'm, when I'm relaxed, you can, you can barely see it. Ah, the beauties of age. Okay, so I've got my light color, I've got a mid-tone color. Hopefully you can see those two colors. And then we take what is our smudger brush. It's got a smaller head. The bristles are tighter, closer together. When they say smudger, they're talking about um, taking a color and like getting really close to your lash line to create um, a smoky look or to line your eyes in top and bottom. But what you can also use a smudger for is a very precise line if you want to do a cut crease. Um, we're going to use a smudger to do our outer corner. So what had I decided? Oh yes, French roast. So we used crystalline as our highlight, hazelnut as the midtone, and I'm going to introduce to you French roast. It's a very rich and beautiful color, quite dark, so I'm going to try to keep it in a smaller area so that it's not too overwhelming. Tapping off the excess. Okay, here we go. And, okay, this is where I, I don't know if I explain it very well because I don't fully understand it myself. Sometimes I can do things that I, I just do it and I don't always even understand what I'm doing. Okay, basically you're making a V in this outer corner. My situation is my eyes are droopy and so... Like if I really found, you know, like where my corner is, it's way down here. So if I literally did a V there, my V would be pointing down. <laughs> so I have to be a little bit creative. And most people do. So you're looking at your eye, um, you know, you know, open it up and be relaxed and look at it and just kind of decide, okay, so where ideally... You know, assuming that you want to lift and elongate your eyes, where should that be? Be, And so you want it to be, you know, I don't know if there's a, a hard and fast rule, but, you know, not quite as high as the high point of your crease, but definitely higher than your where your lash line is. I don't know. I'm putting mine here. I don't know what what to call that. But I kind of start here, and then as I'm making a V, I'm coming in this way. Making my little, following my crease, following, well, I guess I'm just following the orbital bone, but just for a little while. And then I'm coming down toward my lower lashes. I need to load up a little more. So I guess I would say... 
you're kind of finding like where your orbital bone is ish and you're going along that path but just a little way and then come back to where you started and you're coming down toward your lash line I'm using French Rose which is another shimmer you see how I made kind of an arrowhead there so my my technique is I, I do it in a precise manner at first so that I can kind of see where it is and what I did and then I kind of blur the edges you know you Generally speaking, you don't want anything to be uber precise, except a cut crease. There's always exceptions to the rule. All right, so then I'm going to go back and just kind of like feather it, so to speak. Just kind of soften it a little bit, like at the top, toward the side, coming down, bring it in a little bit. I'm just kind of softening it, I guess. So now I'm taking my V and I'm making more like a piece of pie. See how I did that? I just sort of feathered all that color. I didn't put any more color. I just took what was there and just kind of brushed it in. I could add more color. You know I would love to. I'm all about that. Matter of fact, <laughs> I might go back and add a little bit more right now. And that's what's fun about it is that you can add more. So start small and, you know, Add as you if you want to and then if you feel like oh, oh, oh that was not a good choice then you just go back and buff it out with a clean brush okay and so right now I feel like oh that's kind of high but then I have to remind myself that then when I relax my eye it's not really that high after all because of how my eye is all right so the let's see the crease brush is also a really good blending brush so i might come back in here to just kind of blend this a little bit better blending is the biggest the biggest thing of all when it comes to eye color so it looks good in my giant makeup mirror i don't know if it looks good to you we'll see Okay, I'm going to do that on the other side, finding, trying to find it in the same spot. Orbital bone, not too high, not too low. Coming in part way. Coming down all the way to my lash line. Making somewhat of a V. Again, this is French roast. It's a really rich, sort of a cool brown, cool toned brown. Once I have my, my V outline, then I start kind of feathering it in, filling it in. So then I go from a V shape to more of a pie shape. And then I try to match because, you know, every day it probably looks a little bit different. So I'm like, okay, so I gotta bring that a little farther. Also, it's funny, my lighting is always different on one side of the room than the other side of the room, so I have to be careful because I usually end up making one side, you know, darker than the other because my lighting is different. By the end of the day, it's all worked out. And then it's time to wash it off. Okay. And I'm blending it again with my handy dandy crease brush. I didn't add any color to the crease brush. I'm just picking it up. I'm just kind of brushing it. And the um, honey spice. Oh, did I call it crystalline a little while ago? I think I did. My bad. Honey spice is what I have um, up high. Dang, I'm probably going to have to redo this whole thing because I did that. Should I? Okay. Um, and should I stick with French roast to 
to line. You know what I think I'm going to do? I think I will do coal, which is a black, it's a matte black on top, and I'll do French roast underneath. And I'm still using the smudger brush, which still works to line your eyes. So I'm dipping it in coal. I do hold my eye down, but I try not to yank it. And I'm just following my lash line. Oh, I don't think I got nearly enough. Trying to get really close. And you want it to kind of fade as you get closer to your tear duct over here. All right, we'll do the both coal before I tap into the French roast. And you'd think it would be easier for me to do my right side since I'm right-handed, but for some reason it really isn't. Okay. And you know when we we open our mouth to relax our eye, that's just uh, and something that we do innately. All right, so now I'm getting more of my French roast, tapping it off. Another reason to tap it off when you're lining is because you don't want like the flakes of the powder to get in your eyes. That does happen and it feels irritating. It's safe for the eye area. It's not gonna hurt anything. It just doesn't feel good. Okay, and so then I'm starting out here and I'm just following along. I'm probably not gonna go all the way, maybe two thirds of the way. And then bring it right up into that whole B area. Just kind of remember how everything is about blending. Can you see how pretty that color is? I hope so. You can also get a really thin, fine brush to line your eyes. I do that sometimes as well. But this is this is a real popular look right now. I just have that real smudged uh, look. I'm working it into my corner or my crease. Okay, so now this is the scary part where I flip it from magnified to normal to see how it looks for real. Not too bad. What do you think? Honey spice underneath my brow on the lid. Hazelnut in the crease. French roast. First in a V. Then we kind of feathered it out into a pie shape. Coal along the top lashes and French roast again underneath. Now, going back to what we learned about setting, let's see what brush I want to use for this. I'm going to clean off my big fluffy all over brush. And I'm going to get some of my translucent loose powder and now I'm going to go back up underneath my eye and I'm using that for two things. I'm cleaning up any stray um, mineral powder that's under my eye and I don't want it to be there. I am setting my um, foundation and concealer in that area and I'm also just brightening that area. Then again, I'm patting because I really want it to stay there and do its job. Out here, I might feather a little bit. And then I'm even gonna go in this area here. I did not use a lot of product. I 
just kind of just enough to, I don't even know if you can see that. I'm just kind of cleaning up the area. Really more than anything, I'm cleaning up the area. Because my final step up to set everything is the makeup setting spray. You know how much I love that. And let's see, I feel like I need a little more shimmer. Let's just put some honey spice right here by the tear duct. any of this out. I just grabbed a clean fluffy giant brush because it was handy. How does it look? I don't know. I don't know until I rewatch this how it looks on video. It looks okay to me. And then I got the whole lighting thing. Like the closer I get the more ghostly I look. But then I want you to be able to see what it looks like. Ugh. <laughs> Oh, the woes. So, three colors. Your lightest color under your brow bone and on your lid. Mid-tone, following your orbital bone. Darkest color, V-shape in the outer corner, fanning it in to make sort of a piece of pie. Then, if you want to, you can line your eyes with your shadow using your smudger brush. <laughs> Uh, it comes and goes. It's only the beginning. All right, so that's all that I wanted to show you for this for today. So hopefully it made a little bit of sense. I'll probably have to redo this. I feel like I made too many mistakes. We'll see. All right, thanks.